What is going on you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. And today we're gonna be unboxing, reviewing, and playing with the new Razer Basilisk Wireless. where we do our unboxings as well as our custom controller builds, PC builds, and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. So cracking into the box here, we will need an, un no, we do not need an unboxing knife. It has a pull tab, so that's cool. Making for easy unboxing. Comes right off, we'll just stick that right to the box itself. So Razer packaging is always really nice. Their instruction manuals. Some of the main features of the Basilisk X Hyperspeed, great marketing there. Uh, is the ultra long battery life, which is very important because my Razer Lance head after two and a half years of use, the battery life is really poor. I actually have to charge it. I have to charge it every single day. Uh, generally, you know, if I'm in a six to eight hour gaming session or something like that, it'll probably be just about dead when I'm done, um, which is unfortunate. So extra long battery life, Razer mechanical mouse switches. So much like their, you know, keyboards and their gaming mice, they have nice mechanical switches in there to give you a satisfying tactile click. You have onboard DPI storage, so you can actually set different DPI or dots per inch profiles, which will control your sensitivity. This does have Bluetooth support and a 1600 DPI optical sensor. Granted, if you're playing first person shooters or something that, like that, you're probably going to keep your DPI between 800 and 2000 at the very highest. So it's always weird to me when these gaming mice have optical sensors that go up to 1600 or 16,000 or 18,000 DPI or CPI. It's the same thing, different different term, but same thing. Um, that's just ridiculous. Nobody actually uses that in gaming. Six programmable buttons, and then it looks like you have a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, kind of like this mouse. So you don't need to use it via Bluetooth. You will get a faster, zero latency, quicker wireless connection by using the included dongle, not using Bluetooth. This mouse does not have Bluetooth, but it's wireless, obviously, as you can see by the fact it's on, but not plugged in. Uh, it does have a little tiny dongle that you plug into the back or the top of your PC tower, uh, which is really, really cool. All right, so opening up the packaging here. So cracking into the box here, you have your instruction manual, which as I said, is always, you always have this thank you letter from the CEO, which is really cool, you know, thanking you for your purchase, letting them know if you have any issues whatsoever to contact customer service. Then a brief description of the product that you just bought. We're the first to create a mouse dedicated to gaming. Is that true? Was Razer the first gaming mouse? I could have swore like Logitech had been the computer gaming peripheral space since like the early 90s when like, Half-Life and Quake and stuff like that were really big. Counter-Strike. I'm not saying they're lying here. Today, we continue to be industry leaders utilizing the latest technology to deliver gaming mice equipped with the best optical sensors backed by the fastest and most stable wired and wireless connections. Left or right-handed, so ambidextrous mice, as well as they have ergonomic models as well, like the Basilisk here is not an ambidextrous. This is a ergonomic, meaning it's for definitely for a right-handed player. Um, you know, I'm left-handed and I, I game with a, my, I use a mouse with my right hand. I can't even fathom using my left hand to aim and stuff. You have your instruction manual here. This one is uh, not as pretty as a lot of the other Razer products. It does have that Razer branding lime green in there. Uh, good font, English is the primary language. It does seem quite descriptive. It has a lot of pictures for pairing and uh, how to install the battery as this doesn't have a rechargeable battery it appears it comes with a one double a battery that's very interesting but that's kind of a benefit though i would say because it's one double a not two and also if it dies or whatever or it gets on low battery and you're in the middle of a gaming session you don't have to plug in and play wired like i do with my lance head you can just pop in a fresh battery granted that will add up over time using disposables however you can get a little charger dock with four rechargeable double A's for about $15 on Amazon. I'll have a link to that in the description below as well as the mouse itself. All right, so we have our actual Basilisk here. Razer always has really good stock skates and these look no different. These look very similar to what's on the Razer Lancet over here. Wow, actually they feel better. Wow, great set of stock skates. Holy Christ. Oh my God. Oh, baby. Oh 
Oh, snap aim in heaven, baby. This is when I'd put my full-size keyboard back and just grab my one-hander, get to a little first-person shooting. Good God. The stock skates on this thing are amazing. Uh, that is probably the best set of stock skates I have ever tested. I've tried aftermarket skates like G-Skates G and stuff like that, and those are really good. But for stock skates, wow. Also, I noticed immediately this ergonomically feels really good. It's This is an ergonomic mouse, so it's sculpted to the to your palms. You could claw grip or uh, fingertip grip with this, but this is primarily for palm grip as it is an ergonomic mouse. It's not a compact ambidextrous mouse like the Lance head back there. Um, so I probably would just palm grip with this, which is what I do 90% of the time anyway. The only time I claw grip is if I'm trying to be really snappy and I have my DPI really low. Um, but not only is it ergonomically really sculpted, but you have this really nice rubberized material, which kind of feels like what Xbox uses on their premium controllers, like their elites and limited editions. Um, it's a really nice grippy rubber, but it's not like, it's not too much, if that makes any sense. It's very grippy. And you have this nice cutout that fits your thumb just perfectly to where your thumb isn't on the mouse pad, it's actually on the mouse. Uh, you do have two programmable but buttons over here, which have a very nice tactile click. Very nice mechanical switches. Same thing with the right and left click. Very short press, good actuation, good rebound. So I think it's the same switch in left and right. However, they sound different. I think that's just because of the different shape. As you can see, it's gonna echo differently in the different shapes of plastic. But um, it feels identical though. It's not like one of those gimmicky mice that has like a stiffer left mouse button and then a lighter one on the right. It's the same switch for left and right. You also have a mouse wheel here that does click down, of course. Very crisp steps in there. So that's good for web browsing and also gaming when you're trying to, you know, swap between weapons and stuff like that. And then you have a single button on top for switching your DPI profiles. Awesome. So in order to get your dongle out of there, you pull off this back plate right here. This is also how you're going to insert your battery. Here is the little dongle. We're going to unplug the one for the Razer Lance head. And just so we don't misplace it, we're going to put that back in its little carrying cove here. Plug this in on top, and as soon as you plug in a new Razer device, uh, your Razer Synapse 3 application, which is the app that controls all of your hardware for Razer, so keyboards, mice, um, headsets, stuff like that. Uh, you, can, you can set up your RGB lights to coordinate a nice cool pattern amongst all of them and stuff like that. I'm really excited to play a few matches with this thing. So I'm gonna have this for uh, quite a few weeks so I can get a full understanding of how it performs. Jesus Christ, the battery is in there real nice and good. They do not want you to get power to this thing, let me tell you. All right, plus like that. Snap the back on there. So since I do already have the Razer application, but I do not have, I uh, have not used this mouse on my PC, PC yet, it will tell me that there's a mandatory, yep, uh, update that needs to happen. And that's installing all the stuff for this new device. Now on the bottom here, you have three modes. You have off, which it is right now. Then you also have 2.4 gigahertz, which is if you're using that dongle, which we are using. And you do also have the option to use Bluetooth. Now I would not game with Bluetooth. If you're just doing some web browsing or working on some schoolwork or something like that, Bluetooth will work just fine, but you do get a little bit of noticeable lag or latency with Bluetooth. As where if you're using a, a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, it's a much quicker connection. And if you are wireless, you want, you know, you don't want to notice any kind of lag or delay. Switching that on, you get this lime green light that illuminates. The mouse instantly works without even any drivers being installed or anything like that. You probably actually could run this without having to install the drivers, uh, but you're not going to have any control over uh, adjusting your DPI besides what's already the three onboard profiles that are stored on there. So if you want to set up a custom DPI, you want to remap the button, stuff like that, you will need to install, install the Razer Synapse 3 app, but it appears that this is plug and play and you can just use it as is. So it needs a restart, so we're going to do that now. Save my project here. All right, so it's going to do a quick restart. 
And some of the things that I notice about this right away is, first of all, you cannot play with this wired. So, you know, if this dies or something like that, or you prefer to use a wireless mouse in wired configuration, uh, the Basilisk is not the model for you. However, if it uses disposables, you should never really be dead. You can always just pop in a fresh one. The fact that you have a dongle or Bluetooth support is really cool. And I have got to say, the ergonomics and also the grip and texture on the sides feels phenomenal. I also do love the way the buttons are. Very clicky, very tactile. I like the definitive firm steps that you get in the scroll wheel. And again, I do like the fact that you don't even technically need to have the Synapse 3 application. Um, you have onboard DPI profiles and it works right out of the box without even installing the Synapse app, which is really cool. But again, I do recommend getting the Synapse app because that's going to give you uh, a ton of control. All right, we're gonna wait for the Synapse application to pop up, then I'm gonna take you guys over to my screen and show you guys the software suite and the adjustments you can make on this. Alrighty guys, we are over here at my PC and I'm gonna go ahead and walk you guys through the Razer Synapse 3 application. I have a lot of experience with this app as I have been using Razer products for about three years now. Uh, gaming controllers on the Xbox as well as computer peripherals. So uh, you see I already have my other devices connected here. Uh, but this is what we're concerned with here, the Razer Basilisk X Hyperspeed. That is quite a name. So as you see, we are at 100% battery life. Um, so you'll have a little battery gauge there. It will start indicating when it's low on battery. And I think the DPI switch will also flash red to let you know you're getting low. But point is, it's not just going to run out on you and you'll be screwed. You're actually going to get some heads up that you are low on battery. So you can add profiles. These are not onboard profiles. I believe the only thing that's stored on the actual memory of the mouse itself is the DPI that you set. Uh, but as far as profiles, you're going to have the Razer Synapse 3 application launched and running in the background, and that will control your different profiles. So you can make a custom one for each game that you play and stuff like that. Uh, you can change what clicking down the scroll wheel does. The two buttons on the side here, which by default, I think are... Uh, work as forward and back when you're browsing a website, which is pretty cool. And again, I probably wouldn't remap any of these because all game, all video games have key binds that you can set up where you can program your mouse buttons and stuff like that. Uh, but if you do want to change things, you can actually set this up to be mouse functions, macros, so it'll do multiple functions with one press of a button. You can have it switch profiles. Uh, you can launch a program, like uh, any program on your computer. You can uh, pause and rewind media. You can pretty much set the functionality of any of, the, of these buttons to do anything that you want. Again, I'm just going to leave these default though. Over here, performance, you have your DPI mode. So as I press the DPI button on the top of the mouse, it scrolls through them. This is 16,000. As you see, it's extremely twitchy. I barely move the mouse and it jumps across the screen. 36 feels really good, really smooth, really manageable. 1800 is actually what I play at. That is literally my DPI that I play video games at uh, on PC. Um, yeah, 1800, which I know sounds a little high, but I, I knocked down my game mouse aiming sensitivity just a skosh, and that seems really good for me. I can track slow moving targets across the screen. I can also snap aim if somebody's behind me. Um, so that works great. If you don't want the sensitivity stages, you can turn them off or you can knock it down to uh, two profiles. If you only want to switch between like 1800, then you pick up a sniper rifle and you want to go down to like 500 and get some real slow, precise movement, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can also change the amount of times that the mouse resets or refreshes its data back and forth to the PC. I just leave that on the default, which is the maximum of a thousand. This is awesome. I have actually never seen this feature in a mouse before. Um, and I've tested a lot of, a lot of high end premium, uh, gaming mice from, you know, Corsair and, uh, HyperX and Logitech and stuff like that. So smart tracking, this is for mouse lift off. So when you're flicking and then you lift off like that, so the sensor comes up off your mouse pads, so you can quickly stop. Um, and not very many people, even a lot of pro esports athletes don't even do lift off just cause it, I feel like for the amount of effort you have to do, the reward is pretty low, but anyway, you can set if you want one or two millimeter tracking distance. So as I hover my mouse above my mouse pad, how close I have to be on there before, you know, I lift off and it stops. So like right now I'm flicking and then I lift off. Boom, boom, boom. That's great. Uh, that's really cool. So if you do 
perform liftoffs while you play because you're an absolute sweat lord on first person shooters. That is cool to have. Then you also have power settings over here. I would set this to enter sleep mode. Uh, yeah, five minutes sounds good. Uh, any less than that, if you just walk up, walk away, go to the bathroom or something and come back, your mouse is going to be off for a second. As soon as you start moving it, it will wake from slumber, but sometimes there's a little delay and uh, it just wastes time. Uh, but obviously you don't want it any, any higher than five minutes because if you're leaving your room for a substantial period of time, you want it to save juice. So I'm gonna hop into a game real quick, guys. Get you guys some footage of me molly whopping some enemies with this thing and uh, give you an idea of how this thing performs as it is, you know, a, a gaming mouse. Granted, it can be used for absolutely anything, multimedia production or just typical web browsing. But this is, you know, from a, a gaming peripheral company. So obviously it's going to be for gaming, hence the mechanical keys. Alrighty guys, so as with every Razer product I've tested, minus my, maybe the Razer Rise U for PS4, that controller, I didn't like the ergonomics on it, but uh, I am not disappointed with this at all. Ergonomically, this feels fantastic in the palm, especially if you like that ergonomic style mouse, you don't prefer an ambidextrous style mouse, um, which I don't really get the point of ambidextrous mice unless you really are going to be using it both left and right handed, which you probably aren't, because I know plenty of left handed gamers like myself, and we all use our mouse in our right hand. It's not like, because this just feels absolutely ridiculous. But uh, yeah. so what's not ridiculous, these stock skates, like these are insane. They're not too slick to where you feel like you're on, you know, a, an ice slick or an oil slick or something like that. But it's incredibly responsive. Uh, when I had a DPI 1800, it felt perfect. It felt just like my Lance head, but maybe a little bit more responsive. As that is an older model, they don't actually produce the Lance head anymore. You can still find them online. Uh, refurbished, used, and also there's still some new inventory floating around certain vendors and stuff. Uh, but all in all, this is great. And the fact that this also has Bluetooth, so if you lose that dongle for some reason, which you don't really have an excuse to because you store it inside the mouse itself, but if you can't find the dongle or something, or you just prefer to use it as a Bluetooth mouse, again, if you're gaming, I wouldn't recommend that. I'd, I'd recommend using the dongle. You're gonna get a quicker wireless connection with it. Um, but that's great that you have that option. I do actually like the fact that it's disposable. They advertise 450 hours on one AA battery. That's massive. That is insane battery life. If that is even, if it's even over a hundred, that's pretty good. Um, well, it'd be good for a rechargeable, like built into the, the mouse. I guess for a disposable, that's, that's better. But uh, 450 hours on one battery, that's really, really impressive. Uh, a lot of that probably, Quits. so a lot of that extra battery life probably comes from the fact that this doesn't have any RGB lighting, uh, which, you know, most Razer products have RGB that flow Whoa, through them and stuff, something. which looks cool, but honestly, you can turn that off anyway if you want to save juice. And, you know, the fact is, on a mouse, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's covered by your hand anyway, and you're definitely not staring at it while you game. Uh, a keyboard, you know, it's plugged in, so obviously power is not an issue, and... Yeah, you're not really That's staring at the RGB when you're yeah. playing anyway, you're just looking at the monitor. But yeah, I, I do like it a lot. The mouse clicks felt really crisp and tactile. I love the stepped wheel on there. Um, pressing down on the mouse wheel is really silent and also has a nice satisfying click to it as well. And then these side buttons, I absolutely love how these feel. Like I said, if you press that one, it goes back. If you press this one, it takes you forward. Uh, when you're browsing the internet and yeah i mean this is this is awesome especially for the price so this thing retails for 59.99 on razor's website best buy stuff like that however amazon has it right now i actually got this one for 39.99 so awesome that's 20 dollars off that's a third of the price or 33 percent actually this does not feel like a 40 dollar mouse this feels like a 60 70 dollar mouse all day um very impressed with it overall i mean i think this is great bang for the buck and I don't think anyone would honestly be disappointed with this mouse. If you do want to check out the Basilisk Hyperspeed, I do have a link in the description below, as well as uh, that rechargeable battery pack that I was mentioning if you get sick of going through disposables. But 450 hours, and that's a consistent gameplay. That's not just standby time, because it goes into, it turns itself off when it's not being used. So pretty darn cool. And those stock skates, my freaking God, Jesus. Yeah, those are good. They feel similar to what's on the Lance Head, but better. And the Lance Head used to retail for a lot more than 60 bucks, that's for sure. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Peace.